Hey guys, welcome to another episode. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use slicers to better filter your pivot tables in Excel. Pivot tables have been around for I don't know how long. Ever since I started using Excel like 15 years ago, they were there. We've all been used to like uh, all those different drops and downs that we can do to filter uh, pivot tables. But a few iterations of Excel back, Microsoft introduced slicers and slicers are a much more visual way to filter your pivot tables. To my surprise, a lot of people still don't know about this feature and they're not using it. That's why I decided to uh, show you how easy it is to set up. And uh, keep in mind, slicers are gonna make your pivot tables much easier to interact with. So especially if you're sharing them with non-Excel savvy users, like maybe you're sending your file to some executives or other uh, stakeholders, it's gonna be much less intimidating for them to work with the file and uh, they'll be able to easily interact with your uh, data. The Magnimetrics beta is still open, so first link in the description below, you can still grab your free account and uh, we've been receiving a lot of feedback, thank you for that, and we're working hard to make the platform better for you and for us. Test it out and let me know what you think. Before we jump in Excel, if you like the content, thumbs up will be awesome and a sub to the channel will be amazing. <laughs> yep, let's open Excel and dive straight in. Here in Excel, I have a sample sales data set from Kago. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. And it has all those columns with order number, quantity, the status, the sales amount, product line, and so on and so forth. Analyzing this is gonna be kinda of hard like that, so let's go ahead and add a pivot table. I'm gonna press Control shift right and down uh, with the arrows to select the whole thing. And then let's just go to insert pivot table, put it on a new worksheet, and that's our pivot table. So what I'm interested from here is, I wanna start with the territory. I know the region, um, then let's go ahead and add the country. What else do we have here? So customer name is a good one that we might wanna drill down into. Let's grab the order number. If, you, if we wanna see a specific order number. I'm gonna also add the status of the order, whether it's shipped or refunded or whatever. And for values, I'm just gonna add sales. Like that, it's still kind of hard to read. So what I usually do is I'm gonna go to uh, Pivot Table Design, Report Layout, Show in Tabular Form. I'm gonna remove the subtotals and I'm gonna repeat all item labels. So now I have a nice list of all the sales. Of course, as you know, I like uh, things to be formatted in a, a specific way. So Go see, and there's gonna be sales review, sales, my company name, USD, apply style. I'm just gonna change the style of the pivot table here as well, and down here as well. So I'm gonna grab the whole column, I'm just gonna format it in accounting. Okay, let me zoom it in a bit. So we have the territory, the country, the customer name, the order number, the status of the order, and the sales amount. Now, if you want to drill down and analyze, what we can do is we can, let's say, go through here, select EMEA only, look at EMEA sales, go to a specific country. And the problem is that we need to know which countries are part of EMEA. So right now, if I, like, let's say, select Canada and Australia, I should see nothing because they're not in EMEA. Okay, back with no filters. A much easier way to uh, filter this data would be to add uh, slicers. So let's go to Pivot Table Analyze and go to Insert Slicers. And I wanna be able to slice based on the territory, the country, I want the status here as well. And that's it. I can add those three slicers and uh, let's arrange them a bit. So I have this one here, territory, then I'm gonna have the country on the side. I'm pressing out to snap those and I'm gonna have the status over here. And since this is a larger list, we may wanna expand it. 
and now we have our slicers uh, here. Before we go ahead and see how they work, let's add something more. It's going to be here next to uh, the slicer, we have a timeline. And we have order date, which is the date of the orders. And we, we don't even need to have it in here in our pivot table. We can just click add. It's added automatically here. So let's go ahead, add some more lines up here. And let's place our order date on top of our table. Select those four, move them up here. We created our pivot table, picked the fields, and then added uh, slicers for specific fields and also added a timeline. Now let's see how those work. We're going to start with the timeline. You see here that we have uh, sales from 2003 to 2005 in this data set. And we can pick different months, so that's February 23. We can select a few months, so from March to July, and it's going to filter our uh, pivot table. I think months is a bit too uh, granular, so we can change it from here to quarters. And now we can just select different quarters, like first half of 2005, and everything will be filtered below. We just hide the ribbon. Slices work in a similar way. Let's say we want to do the same thing. We want to go to EMEA and then look at different countries. But what's actually better here is that the countries like Australia and Canada that are not available, there's no data for them under the current filters, they are grayed out. You can still select them, but it's easier to figure out what you can and cannot drill down into. Remove this filter here so all the periods are selected. Say we're going to go in EMEA and I want to see disputed orders. And we can see that we have one in Denmark and one in Spain. When I'm done with that, just clear from here as well and everything updates immediately. Another cool feature is that if you enable the multi-select here, so now we can just multi-select different territories. Say so I want to see what's in NA, and you can see that those are Canada and the USA. That's basically all we need to know about slicers and timelines in order to provide much better looking uh, pivot tables that are much easier to use. If I zoom out to about 115%, that's probably how I would usually work. Uh, then I can spread those a bit and uh, make everything look much nicer. There you have it guys, by just spending a couple of minutes to figure out which are the best slicers to add so that uh, your uh, file users can easily cohort and segment the data, you get a much more visual uh, file that's much easier to interact with and in my opinion makes our job much easier. Thank you guys for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and maybe even punch the bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Till then, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.